information bordering on security and those on the privacy of people. So clearly the politicians are using it either because they are paranoid or they are deliberately scaring people with some scaremongering tactic. Otherwise, the, the deal is very clear. It's just for them, but I agree with him saying that this is the best interest of the government. It is only a, a, a corrupt government that is afraid of divulging information or disclosing information. And I don't think the government of Sierra Leone can see itself as being that reasonably corrupt, that they would not want people to have access to public information. Well, that's a very good reaction. I was just thinking on the same line, um, maybe as Umaru and uh, again, Mr. Bojalo Jamboria, we are both on the same plane. It's just the argument that... Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, yeah. Uh, 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 Sorry, Mr. Boy, let me just come. One minute. Uh, on the 24th of August, um, Ali Tim Bethel Mackenzie, who is the executive director of the International Press Institute, visited Sierra Leone. And during that visit, he wrote an open letter to Sierra Leone's president, Anil Bakoma, urging the passage of the FOI bill. The letter states, among other things, I am writing to the, on behalf of the International Press Institute, a global network of publishers, editors, and leading journalists to request that you do everything in your power to ensure that the freedom of in, information bill becomes law before the upcoming elections in November 2012. Blah, 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 blah. But um, during a visit, she discovered, quote, I was grateful to have a chance to meet with the Minister for Information and Communication. Communication. I like the Ibrahim Ben Kabo. Right? I also met with officials from the Sierra Leone Association of Journalism, the Guild of Editors, blah, 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 blah. But what was most important in all these visits was that each time the Freedom of Information Act was put to Parliament, parliamentarians walked out of the, the sitting. Now, it becomes very complex. We are talking about the arms of government. We are talking about the first state, the second state, the third state, the fourth state. <laughs> Mr. Omar Fofana, I'll come back to you. Do you have you ever tried lobbying parliament to sit down and think about the importance of passing this passage in this bill into law? Have you ever thought of that? Absolutely. I mean, I, I, absolutely. We've tried all those um, possibilities. I've even met with some members of parliament outside of Sierra Leone. There was an Open Society um, Institute program held in Dakar, and I met with some members of parliament then. Um, they are both no longer part members of parliament. And they were at the time members of the parliamentary committee, I think, on information and communication. And I used the opportunity to let us understand each other better in terms of um, uh, both the media and the, and, the, and the parliament's interest in this freedom of information. Mm -hmm. We had to change tact at several times. In one instance, it became apparent that some certain uh, politicians were trying to make the whole thing mm -hmm. as if as it was uh, just this idea of journalists wanting to have more access to the information of, of people's privacy. So we took a back seat, large, and left the matter to civil society. I've gone across Sierra Leone on consultations and collaboration with the Society for Democratic Initiatives to hold meetings with civil society groups and communities to let them understand the need for this FOI. I've gone to Parliament. In fact, I went there when the bill was initially tabled. Um, there is what is known here as a pre-legislative committee meeting. And I was there to clarify issues that the members of Parliament would have issues with. We've tried all that we can. We've lobbied. We've done advocacy. We've demonstrated. And I've got to say that the president, before he became president of Sierra Leone, had assured us that if he won the elections, he was going to ensure that the FOI bill became law. Did he win the elections, but uh, never did he pass this bill into law. And uh, I was in London at the, at the um, what was called Conference for Sierra Leone Development in, I think, in 2009. And uh, when the president returned from that donors conference, he held a meeting at State House. And he assured us that he would ensure that this bill became law before the end of his first term which ended last year. It didn't happen. And the bill was killed, technically, in Parliament. Now we have been told that we have to go full throttle, that the bill has to be relayed in Parliament. Probably even some of the other areas will have to be amended. We've tried all ways that we can. Simply, there is more of the leap will than the real political will in terms of having this bill into law. Until it happens otherwise, I'm not convinced it's going to happen soon. 
Okay, um, okay, ladies sorry, and gentlemen, uh, dear uh, listeners, uh, this is all we've got for you on this first segment of our um, discussion. When we come back, we'll try to dig deep into this issue to see if the president has really got the, the, the power to make this um, bill a reality, um, or is it being is it being um, sort of held back by the, the members of parliament? Is the bill being held back by members of parliament? Or is the Sierra Leone Association of Journalists in Sierra Leone not doing enough to make it work? We'll look at these issues when we come back in our next segment. Stay okay, de la lune, mon ami Zongo, we'll be back. Refuse de bayonner sa plume au Burkina Faso et Zongo est mort. Brûlé par le feu, que justice soit faite pour l'amour de Dieu. Uh, a lot of things will have gone wrong. 
because they were very bold, they were very steadfast, they were very patriotic, uh, they were able to carry the day. As I said, the only way for evil to triumph is for good people to do nothing. I see no reason why a president that committed themselves to introducing something in their manifesto should then, only after being elected to power, renege on their very promise. I can only think of one thing. They probably have got something to hide. Right? If no one has got anything to hide, I see no reason why they should be saying information that has got to do with the survival of the state should be kept in the closet. Or in the closet, I mean. Right? So this is very important. I think uh, now is time when parliamentarians should realize that they are only the trustees of the nation. They are there to represent the very interests of the people. Freedom of information all over the world has got nothing to do with people's personal issues. It's got to do with things like corruption. It's got to do with things like national uh, security and defense. It's got to do with things like... Uh, you know, civil society, anything that has got to do with development, not necessarily about people's personal issues. So if the politicians of Sierra Leone, the lawmakers, those people trusted with the running of the country, believe they have nothing to hide, believe they are there to represent the country's best interest, then they must go ahead and try and pass the law, I mean, the, the act into law, so the bill into law, sorry. That's all I can say for now, right? I, I'm really gobsmacked to hear what Umaru has been saying about the way politicians have been reluctant to take on board the people's wishes. This is intolerable. I believe it's now time when civil society, as I said earlier on, and the rest of the Sierra Leonean population should be able to ask questions, should be able to stand up and ask questions. That's why, as I said, the role of the media is no longer what we should be talking about. We should be talking about the very responsibility of the media. Okay? Because they've got the role, I mean, the, the duty to stand up against social injustice, against corruption, against human rights abuses. These are, these are social vices that continue to, 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 to reign in Sierra Leone. I mean, being a Sierra Leone myself, born in Sierra Leone, I sometimes feel very sorry when I read on, in the media some of the things that are going on in that part of the world. I mean, it's really shocking. It's unbelievable. It's such a shame that only a few people should be lining their pockets at the expense of the nation. I hear in the news people grabbing land, people building themselves mansions. People should be able to ask questions. How much are you paid? What is your salary? How come you're building this house within such a short time? Right? People should be asking these questions. I mean, the, the country is not going to stand on its own. People are the ones that are definitely going to ensure that. I mean, when I say people, I mean ordinary people, the rank and file of society. Because left on their own, they are only going to continue to pursue their own personal interests. So this is the uh, observation I would like to make. Yeah, that, that, that's a brilliant observation. And uh, <clears throat> from what I've gathered from you, Mr. Matt, Jimmy, um, you're talking about the role of the media, the way they should um, approach such things. Boy, you are very cautious to say they have to do it responsibly and give as power as well to the people. Oh, we are talking about the media. The people can be the media. It can be books. It can be what the boy's name can do <laughs> from his own little creation. It can be somebody who, who comes up with some magazine, Go Woman, for instance. All of these things are being um, put to us. They are they are being served us to, 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 to the people for us to use as um, media to, to to reach the powers that be. But importantly, you are talking about the civil society, their role during the war. Now we are talking about post-war Sierra Leone. We don't want to go back to some of those mistakes. The civil society. We are they serving the general good or a particular party or an establishment? These are the questions, or uh, this is the question I would like to ask Mr. Mohamed Bojalo Jamboya. Was the civil society serving their own personal um, um, good, or were they serving the, 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 the good of members of society? Linked to that, I will ask you again, Mr. Mohamed Bojalo Jamboya, is it worth it to block the Freedom of Information Act? where the Public Order Act of 1965 is still 
um, active, right? Because we need to expunge the criminal law.